Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Welcome back for another Theory of Pets episode. Today I am talking to an expert not only in the pet industry, but also in the fashion industry. Ivy Higa is uh, someone who has been working in the fashion industry for over a decade. Uh, you may recognize the name. She was on season eight of the show Project Runway, if you're a fan of the show. And she has recently turned her love of fashion into a business venture in the pet industry. And it was all thanks to uh, a little rescue dog that she took in. Um, so I'm going to let her tell you more about her story and uh, the business that she started. Aloha, my name is Ivy Higa. I am originally from Hawaii and I moved to New York about 13 years ago now um, to pursue a career in fashion design. And you actually have worked with some really big designers. Yes, I was actually really fortunate to um, right out of the gate to be able to work with some really great companies and having some really great mentors and great design houses. Um, I've come from a background of working with com designers like Diane von Furstenberg, Siri, Jason Wu, who I don't know if a lot of people know, but dressed Michelle Obama for the inauguration um, when President Obama became, pre um, became president. And... Gosh, who else? Um, I started my career at Lafayette 148, and then from there with the recession, lost my job, and I looked at it as an opportunity, um, not so much as a pitfall, and founded my own clothing brand for women at that time, and this was back in 2009, 2010. And, you know, I had a great um, business, but it just wasn't sustainable at the time. And that lasted for about three years, and then from there, had an opportunity to work at some of these great design houses. And you also appeared as a contestant on season eight of Project Runway, which uh, some of our listeners may know you from the show. Yes. So during the time I had my business, um, I went and participated as a design competitor on Project Runway season eight, I believe it was. It's been so long now. Um you know, and didn't really have the best casting, um, but, you know, you look at it as an opportunity to grow and kind of reflect and use that time as a learning block. And then from there, I had an opportunity to come back two years later to participate in the All-Stars and kind of reflect and just really having a good time with it during All-Stars um, rather than looking at it as a competition the first time around. Absolutely. And then from there, yeah. So um, from there, after that, I had an opportunity to work at DKNY and lead at the design team there. And after that, I left my post, and I'm currently working for another fashion brand. And you also have founded a company called Bespoke Paws, and it kind of um, bridges your love of fashion and your love of animals. Yes, so I have my Yorkie Brooklyn, who is six years old. I rescued him from a puppy shelter or puppy mill type of environment. Um, I didn't even realize what puppy mills were at that time. And if the listeners want to check in with an interview that we did at another podcast called Dogs Meet the People, and we kind of I talked about how Brooklyn really impacted my life. And from there, you know, I just, I was so enamored and in love with him that I just wanted to create something where I could bring an awareness to people that didn't know about rescuing or adopting like I had and also um, use my background in fashion design to create something where I can ultimately spend the rest of my time working with my dog, Brooklyn, because I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> <laughs> What a great way to bridge your two passions in life. And your brand certainly stands out from other dog clothing companies. Talk to us a little bit about the brand and what makes it different. Okay. So, you know, 
one of the biggest things that I found that was missing in the pet industry was high quality products. And it's so interesting because in the fashion industry, it's kind of the opposite. You have these really high quality products that are very expensive. And then you have all of these fast fashion brands that are kind of mimicking what the high fashion brands are already creating at a lower price point. Okay. We're in the fashion and um, we're in the pet industry. It's kind of the opposite where there really isn't a high quality brand or product for pets. It's more of the fast fashion type of products where it's very less expensive, but with the price points being so low, you're kind of sacrificing quality. And with my background in um, both technical design, which is kind of more of the engineering aspect of fashion, as well as the design aspect of fashion and creation, I thought it would be a great um, opportunity to create this because there really isn't anything out there with the quality and the craftsmanship. And, you know, I try to be mindful of the price, but we're not looking to make a fast fashion type of brand. Um, I'm really looking to have high quality products. So you don't have to buy more. You just buy one good one and it lasts for the rest of your life. You're based in New York City. Um, I'm in Maine, so just a little bit north of you. And especially this time of year, we have some really brutal cold winters. And one of the things that I have struggled with, uh, we've always had large breed dogs and never really worried about their warmth in the winter. But we recently... Uh, back in July, we rescued uh, a little dog. He's a mixed breed, but um, he is part Italian greyhound. So he's small. He's very uh, built very petite, and he has very thin kind of wiry hair. So he gets cold very easily, even in late fall when it's we're not really bundling up as humans, but he, I would notice that he spent less time outside and he would shiver. And so I started looking, of course, for some winter gear for him. And it is hard to find quality dog wear. Yes, I agree. The thickness, really, um, like we we had a couple of sweaters that we tried that, um, I, you know, I thought when it wasn't really cold out, um, he would enjoy. And they were just so thin, they really didn't do a whole lot. Um, and we, you know, we've really struggled with that. So it's nice to see you sort of seeing that and noticing that in the pet industry and now trying to do something about it to help pet owners. Oh, Definitely. So we got an opportunity to have a retail presence in New York City through a dog spa um, that's called New York Dog Spa and Hotel, and they were very much on board because we are all about supporting animal rescues, and $2 from every sweater purchase gets donated to an organization that supports homeless animals. And that's something that's really important to me because I didn't even realize that these rescues and organizations were available. Absolutely. And it's it's fantastic that you're educating other people as well. Obviously, I've worked in the pet industry for many years. Um, so, you know, rescue organizations is something that I'm very familiar with. But there's certainly a lot of people out there that don't understand. And I love earlier, uh, you mentioned that before you had rescued your pup, you didn't even realize what a, a puppy mill was. And that's something exactly. I... Yeah, it's something I think that's so important to bring to light and educate people about dogs. Dog ownership is growing phenomenally over the last, you know, decade. And so um, the more we can educate potential pet owners or people who already own pets but would like another, um, I think that's really important. So kudos to you for doing that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And I also feel like Brooklyn really transformed my life. And I can only imagine other people being transformed by their dogs. So this is something that I really wanted to use my uh, my background in and my experience in and creating something and creating a new genre for the pet industry. You know, a lot of the pet industry materials used are synthetic and it's really damaging to the earth. And, you know, it leaves a really bad carbon imprint. Acrylic fabric, polyester, rayon, all of those types of fabrics aren't good for the environment. And if we are using them, it's good to just use, purchase like one or two pieces and have that last a lifetime of your dog rather than buying multiple items. And right now, you know, the Petco and the PetSmart corporations, everything in their stores are all polyester or acrylic based. 
and those can't be recycled. And so what we try to do is use natural materials and natural fibers because, one, it's good for the environment. We also make sure that it's sustainable and the, all the materials and the work environments of where we're sourcing from are sustainable. And, you know, like you said, it, it's high quality. It's about really thinking about the animal like our family member, not just our pet. So that's how I view Brooklyn. So I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> no. But, you know, Brooklyn is... Yeah, he's my child. He's my son. He's he's everything to me. So I want to give him the best of the quality, and I want other people to experience that through Beastful Cause. And so many people feel that way. You know, they, we have obviously seen past generations where pets were used more for a purpose, whether they were a working animal or yeah. um, something like that. But, you know, now we're seeing more that people are realizing that that bond that we have with our pets is so much greater than what we thought before. And, you know, people oh, are absolutely. seeing them definitely more as members of the family and, um, you know, wanting to give them higher quality, whether it be food or, um, you know, the, the products that they're using with their pets they're looking for higher quality yes definitely and you know I really feel like that's something that we're mindful of when creating any of our products or any of our designs and you know with the colder months coming up I'm sure it's so much colder in Maine than it is in New York and you know coming in the next couple of weeks we are also launching a um, cashmere blend scarf set so that you can match with your dog and so I just felt like, you know, how perfect would it be for Valentine's Day? You get something for both you and your pet to bond together and like for your, your perfect loved one. There's no one better than your pet to get a gift for. Yeah, what a great idea. And even for, you know, people that are trying to shop for somebody else for Valentine's Day. And we always, I think everybody oh, I, struggles yeah. with that. Yes, absolutely. And I know just to touch back on what you were saying about different sized dogs, I do understand that the larger dogs, usually it's the larger dog owners don't dress their dogs, but I also felt like this was kind of a cute opportunity for you to be able to match with your dog without without having to feel silly about it, you know, if, if someone does feel that way. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, that definitely is a stigma that comes along with dressing your dogs. And, um, you know, we we never had dressed our dogs before, not necessarily because it seemed silly, but it just, you know, I, I don't know. We had never really put a lot of thought into clothing for our pets until we got Joey and, and it became a necessity. Uh, and now exactly. we actually, we have an older uh, chocolate lab who has, she has a double coat, very thick fur and never had a problem with the winters before. But now that she's getting older, we're, we are noticing that she's not enjoying being outside as much in the cold. So I think there's definitely a functionality for clothing clothing for dogs of all sizes, all coat types, um, in really, oh, absolutely. and really in every, you know, region too. I mean, even if you live in a, a Southern area where it's warm most of the time, your dog's kind of conditioned to that warm weather. And when those temperatures dip down, you know, in the fall and winter at night or in the evenings, if you're going for a walk, I think it's certainly something that, um, everybody could use. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it's just so interesting because, just exactly what you said. I'm not the type of person that would dress my dress Brooklyn during the spring and summer season, but I do feel like for him it's a necessity. And the reason why I founded this is because, again, going back to not having high quality products. But if I am going to dress him for necessity because he does get cold, I want to make sure that he's in the best proper attire. You know, so it's again mother nature so that he's warm because he does get cold i mean i know smaller dogs do get colder than larger dogs but as you touched on larger dogs also have a climate issue especially when they get older i i've you know seen some pit bulls even that have gotten really cold during the winter and it's been perfect for them Absolutely. And you did mention that you have the um, set coming out with a scarf set for Valentine's Day. Do you have any other um, things kind of irons in the fire right now? Or are you just sort of going with this for Valentine's and then um, maybe create some more when we get into spring and summer? I think for now we're just focusing on the winter season. Maybe perhaps in the future we'll think about designing some lighter products for the spring and summer. But I think, again, it's more about functionality and having really beautiful products during the winter season. So our focus primarily right now is just on winter season sweaters. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for all this great information today. Is there anything else um, that you would like our listeners to know? No, thank you so much. And, you know, we have an Instagram presence. It's Peaceful Pause on Instagram. Or you can follow Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Guy Aloha on Instagram as well. Oh, fantastic. And for anybody that uh, wants to check out your products or learn some more about the materials that you use um, and the products that are available, we do have a link just below the podcast. It's bespokepause.com. Um, and you can click Perfect. that and check that out. Um, you have a, a cute little uh, cashmere ruffle dress on there too that I just love. I, I kind of wish Joey was a boy <laughs> so I could, <laughs> could go and it's very, very cute. Um, so yeah, Thank check out you. check out the site. There's some information on there as well about, um, you know, the organizations that you give back to and um, in yourself if anybody's interested. So uh, it's a great website and um, I will put the link just below the podcast. Amazing. Thank you so much, Samantha. This has been really wonderful and thanks for um, thanks for allowing us to be a part of this. Another huge thank you to Ivy for being here with me today and uh, sharing her journey and her story. Again, you know, her uh, website, the link is just below the podcast if you want to check that out. Also, uh, links to their Instagram and things can be found there if you want to check out some really adorable pictures of Brooklyn and other dogs. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind taking just a moment, you can jump on our website, theoryofpets.com. That's linked below the podcast as well. If you have any suggestions for future topics of podcasts, you can feel free to leave them there. Uh, any questions or comments can go there as well. And if you'd also take a minute just to leave me a quick review, if you're um, on the website or if you're listening to this through iTunes or another streaming service, uh, please just leave a quick review. That always helps me when I'm reaching out to experts trying to get them on the show. I can let them know that you guys are out there listening and you enjoy it and you want to hear more. So uh, feel free to leave me any suggestions, comments, questions, um, and don't forget to leave a review. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back with another hot topic very soon.